Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, Counter spell hater gear. <laughs> Got who I was with. Right? Anyways, uh, we are back with another EDH guide. This time going over uh, finally one of my favorite legendary creatures uh, in past. Uh, Audric, Blood Curse. He has returned in Innistrad Crimson Vow. And he is no longer human. He is a vampire soldier. And for one genetic, a red and a white. A legendary creature, vampire soldier, 3-3. Three, three. <clears throat> and when Audric Blood Curse enters the battlefield, create X blood tokens where X is the number of abilities from among flying, first strike, double strike, death touch, haste, hexproof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, reach, Trample and Vigilance found among creatures you control. Count each ability only once. So this is all about keywords and blinking Audric out and utilizing the blood tokens he creates. So to start off, we have like cards that can give us value off of Audric. So blink him out multiple times or like double up his ETB triggers. <clears throat> Starting with Teleportation Circle which is an enchantment for three generic and a white that says at the beginning of your end step, exile to one target artifact or creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So blink them out. Conjurer's Closet, five generic for an artifact that says at the beginning of your end step, you may exile to target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. Flicker form, one generic and a white for an enchantment or the enchanted creature. And then for two generic and double white, you exile the enchanted creature and all ores attached to it. And at the beginning of the next end step, return that card to the battlefield under its own control. If you do return the other cards exiled this way to the battlefield under their own control, attach to that creature. <laughs> Next is Panhormonicon. The four generic is an artifact that says if an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control the trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Double up Audric's uh, ETB effect, which is there in the battlefield. Lithioform Engine. For four generic, it's a legendary artifact that for two, it can tap to copy target activated or triggered ability to control, and then you may choose new targets for the copy. So uh, copy Audric's blood token ability. Then for three generic, you can tap to copy target instant or sorcery ability control, and you may choose new targets for the copy. We have some blink instant and sorcery spells uh, in here, so that could be useful as well. And then for four generic, you can tap it and copy target parents ability control. So that means you can copy like Pen Harmonicon, uh, Conjurer's Closet Teleportation Circle, or like Angel of Com Com Conde Condemnation, or Audric himself. You just have to uh, sacrifice the token or the uh, like the non-token uh, version of Audric uh, because of the legendary rule. Still, Lithio Form mentioned, pretty cool. Eerie Interlude, uh, two generic and white for an instant that exiles any number of target creatures uh, you control. Then you return those cards to the battlefield under their own control at the beginning of the next end step. So that can be multiple creatures we control, including Angel of, Con of Condemnation here, which is an angel for two generic and double white. And it has flying and vigilance. It's a 3 3. So, some of the turns that are needed for Audric. Uh, then, for two generic and white, it can tap to exile target, another target creature, and then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. And then, for two generic and white, you can tap to exert Angel of Condemnation and exile another target creature until Angel of Con. Condemnation leaves the battlefield. So this can remove creatures you don't, uh, your, your opponents may have, and blink in and out 
creatures you want to blink in and out of existence, like Audric, Blood Curse. And by the way, an exerted creature won't untap during your next untap step, so keep that in mind. Restoration Angel. Uh, for three generic and white, it's an angel with flesh and flying. Three, four. Uh, and when it enters the battlefield, you may exile, target, non-angel creature you control, and return that card to the battlefield under your control. So blink them in and out, no waiting to like end step or anything. Minion Reflector. Five generic for an artifact that says whenever a non token creature comes into play under your control, you may pay two generic. If you do, put a title token that's a copy of that creature <clears throat> into play. That token has haste and at the beginning, at the end, at end of turn, sacrifice this permanent. So you can do that to Audric. Again, you'll have to sacrifice one of them. Did you legendary rule? Beldar Guardian. It's a cat beast, 1-4 for three generic and white. And when it enters the battlefield, you may exile another player permanent you control, then return that card to the battlefield or its own control. So no waiting till end up or anything. Glimmer point stag, two generic and double white for a for an elk through three with vigilance. And when it enters the battlefield, exile another target permanent. Return that card to the battlefield or its own control at the beginning of the next end step. So some waiting, but still. Hoof Prince of the Stag. Uh, so I believe now, no, we have not gotten into like, I didn't organize this, or I forgot. But still, mostly it's organized. Hoof Prince of the Stag, uh, one generic and white for a tribal enchantment elemental. And whenever you draw a card, you may put a Hoof Prince counter on Hoof Prince of the Stag. And then for two generic and white, you remove four hoofprint counters from hoofprints of the stag and put a 4-4 four, four white elemental creature token flying into play. Play this ability only during your turn. So this was meant to go into like blood token value. But more so uh, down here. Ish. Because uh, that was meant to because blood tokens, if you didn't watch last episode, watch for fun. Uh, well, not last episode, but the episode before that. A blood token is an artifact token that the one generic, you can tap it and sacrifice that artifact and discard a card and then draw a card. And hoof rinse of stag is meant to go along with that because then you can start making four fours. Anyways, moving on, we have Wisp Weaver Angel, uh, for, which is an angel for four generic and double white. It's a 4 4 flyer. And whenever it enters the battlefield, you may exile another target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Uh, Popo Free Ghost Forge, three generic and red and white for a legendary. Dwarf Cleric for five. That says Spirit to Control, get plus one, plus one, and have Trample and Haste. Some more keywords for Audric to look for and find. And whenever another non token creature you control dies, exile it. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a spirit in addition to its other types. And it has, when this creature leaves the battlefield, return the exile card to your graveyard. So this, so we can have Audric die, uh, be exiled, and then create a token that's a copy of him, except he's a spirit uh, in addition to his other types, and he has trample and haste. So when, so when that copy comes in, it automatically finds trample and haste on itself, and it's getting plus one, plus one. And when that copy, that is a spirit, leaves the battlefield, you return the you can return Audric uh, from exile to your graveyard, which is pretty nice. Or well, in that case, you would probably return him to the command zone, I guess. Anyways, next is just 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 a Kyer's portal. I have no idea. Uh, one generic and white. It's an instant to exile target to control and then return that. 
cards in the bats with under its own control. It gains first strike until on turn. So another keyword that Audra can look for and find automatically. Cloud shift. For one white, it's an instant to exile target to your control. Then return that card to the battlefield under your control. So just one light and then bam, you blink Audric in and out and get some more blood tokens. Ephemerate, ephemerate, I think. Uh, it's one light for an instant. You exile target to your control. Then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. And it has rebound, meaning if you cast a spell from your hand, exile it as it resolves. And at the beginning of your next upkeep, you may cast this. You may cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. So exile uh, Audric once again. Cosmic Intervention, three generic and white for an instant that says if burnt, you control will be put into a graveyard from the battlefield this turn. Exile it instead and return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. And then for tell cost of one generic and white, meaning that during your turn, you may pay two generic and exile this card from your hand face down and cast it on a later turn for its foretell cost. So you can save Audric this way and a bunch of other creatures you control or like permanents. Say your opponent is about to play like an Armageddon or an Ingarage Wake like Board Wipe and you could just like just destroy all creatures or permanents in general and you can just save all your stuff. <laughs> Ghost Way, two generic and white for an instant that removes each, each creature you control from the game and then return those creatures to play under their owner's control at end of turn. So all of your creatures go away. Uh, now we have like doubling up, still part of like what our commander wants us to do, which is blink him in and out. Annotated Procession, uh, three generic and white enchantments. If an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. So we're getting twice as many blood tokens. That's what we would. Uh, Rionor, Fire Dancer, three, gener three generic and double red for legendary creature, human wizard, three, four. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create X copies, X tokens, excuse me, that are copies of another target creature you control, where X is one plus the number of instant and sorcerer spells you've cast this turn. They gain haste, exile them at the beginning of the next end step. So these can be objects. Since you're casting a lot of instants and or sorceries, probably during your turn, exiling object and like bringing him back. So pretty nice. They will have to be sacrificed, unfortunately, due to a legendary rule, unless you have something to get around it. However, blood tokens still pretty good. Strionic Resonator, two generic. For two generic, it's an artifact that for two generic, you can tap it and copy target triggered ability you control. And you may choose new targets with copy. A triggered ability uses the words when, whenever, or at, and Audric. Audric's, excuse me, ability just so happens to use the word, will begin with the word when. So that is a triggered ability that we will then be able to copy this trionic resonator, giving us once again essentially double the tokens. And to go in combination with trionic resonator, we have flame shadow conjuring, which for three generic. In the red, it's an enchantment that says whenever a non token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay red. If you do, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of that creature. That token gains haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step. So you could copy that with Strident Resonator, create two objects in addition to the original you have. <clears throat> you would still have to sacrifice them because they're because of the legendary rule. But still pretty awesome because that's essentially right there, like triple what the blood tokens you what of what you would be getting normally. Uh, if you use that combination. Mimic that. Uh, three generic. It's an artifact 
and imprint. Whenever a non-token creature dies, you may exile that card. If you do, return each other card exiled with Mimic back to its owner's graveyard. And then for three generic, you can tap to create a token that's a copy of uh, a, an exile card with Mimic Vat. Well, you can, I should say. And it gains haste. Exile at the beginning of the next end step. So this can be multiple Audrics uh, without having to pay much of commander tax at all. Can he can just still remain in exile. Next, we get into kind of uh, what our co a commander is looking for. So, like other like turn like keywords, keyword abilities, and then like artifacts, synergies. So we start that off with a chroma vision of Ixador which is an angel, legendary angel, I should add. I should add, excuse me. For five generic and double white, uh, it's a six, six with flying, first strike, vigilance and trample. So four keywords right there. At the beginning of each combat, until end of turn, each other creature you control gets plus one, plus one if it has flying, the same uh, plus one, plus one if it has first strike and so on for double strike, death touch, haste, Hexproof, Indestructible, Lifelink, Menace, Protection, Reach, Trample, Vigilance, and Partner. Partners where you have two commanders with partner, you can run them in the same deck. That doesn't matter. Then we have a Chroma Angel of Wrath for five generic and triple white. Yeah. It's a legendary creature, Angel once again, 6-6. Six, six. Uh, but now it's even more... Uh, Overwhelming because it has flying, first like vigilance, trample, haste, protection from black and from red, meaning black and red cannot do jack smack to this creature. Like you are done. This means like any red abilities you have in this deck cannot target a chroma angel of wrath. But still a lot of keywords there that Audric is looking for and that he will find in the Chroma. So pretty nice. Sky Terror, red and white for a Dinosaur 2-2 with Flying and Menace. Nice cheap creature. Zitalpa, Primal Dawn for six generic and double white. It's a legendary uh, Elder Dinosaur. 4-8 with Flying, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Indestructible. Some more keywords right there. The Prince of the Sag, we already went over. A Akiri, Line Slinger, Random White for Legendary Future, Core Soldier Ally, 0 3, First Strike Vigilance. It gets plus one, plus zero oh for each artifact you control. So that's why we are blinking the uh, Audric in and out to get more blood tokens to make this even more powerful. Crystalline Giant. For three generic, it's an artifact creature giant. Through three, that says the beginning of combat on your turn, choose a kind of counter at random that crystalline giant doesn't have on it from among flying, first strike, death touch, hexproof, lifelink, menace, reach, trample, vigilance, and plus one plus one. Put a counter of that kind on crystalline giant. So eventually he's gonna have almost every keyword except for double strike and haste i think that's it and maybe some and maybe some others still though he's got most of them by the time it's like turn like it's like seven turns that he's, that crystalline giant's been out so pretty well paid off a uh, fervent champion for red is a human knight with first strike and haste and one one and whenever it attacks, another target attacking knight you control gets plus one plus zero until on turn. And equip abilities you activate that target fervent champion costs three less to cast. I mean three less to activate. Excuse me. Solemn recruit for one generic and double white it is a dwarf warrior two two with double strike and with revolt at the beginning of. Your end step, if a parent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, play plus one plus account and solemn recruit. It says left. Doesn't mean have to have died or been destroyed. 
meaning that being blinked out does count, yes, as being left from the battlefield or leaving from the battlefield, I should say. Meaning that as we blink Audric at the beginning of our end step, we have to patrol song recruit, that is, uh, and if, if we blinked out Audric at all or anything, we put a puzzle puzzle counter on song recruit. It's pretty nice. Sunblade Angel for five generic and white. It's an angel three three with flying first strike vigilance and life link. It's pretty nice. Audric Lunar Marshall. Pretty good. Because for three generic and white, it's a legendary human soldier, the old Audric. Uh, three three. At the beginning of each combat, creatures you control gain first strike until in the turn. If a creature you control has first strike. The same is true for Flying Death Arch, Double Strike, Haste, Hexproof, Indestructible, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Skulk, Trample, and Vigilance. Next, we have Artifacts Energies, starting with Kark Clan Ironworks. With, for four generic, it's an artifact that says sacrifice an artifact, add two colors mana to your mana pool. So, sacrifice those blood tokens for mana. Arcbound, Arcbound Ravenger, excuse me, is a beast. Uh, two, two, and no, sorry, two generic for a zero, zero with modular one that means that it the battlefield with a pulse pulse counter on it. And when it dies, you may put its pulse pulse counters on target artifact creature. And you can sacrifice an artifact to put a pulse pulse counter on Arcbound Ravenger. So sacrifice those blood tokens to Arcbound Ravenger to make it even bigger. Next is Nell Christ Nelsis. I don't know. Uh, for three generic, it's an equipment artifact with living weapon, meaning that when this equipment enters the battlefield, you create a OO black fight rexian germ creature token that attach this to it. And a quick creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control and it has an equip cost of two. So as we create more blood tokens, the creature that has no this no kais attached to it is getting more and more powerful in terms of power and toughness. So pretty nice. Karn, Scion of Urza. For four generic, it's a legendary thing for Karn with five loyalty. And then plus one, it can reveal the top two cards of your library. And upon just one of them, Put that card into your hand and exile the other with a silver counter on it. And minus one, you put a card you own with a silver counter on it from exile into your hand. And minus two, create a zero zero colors construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. That's what we're really looking for right there. Artifact energy, because we'll have so many blood tokens that zero zero will be not a zero zero, but a very big boy. So it'll be nice. Elabu, Ancient Witness. For three generic, red and, and white. It's a legendary artifact creature golem for five and gets other artifact creatures you control. Uh, haste. And whenever one or more artifact creatures you control attack, Elabu, Ancient Witness deals X damage to any target. And you scry X, where X is the number of tapped artifacts you control. And then there's Jor Kadeen, uh, the Prevailer, uh, the Prevailer, excuse me. Three generic red and white legendary creature, human warrior, first strike, uh, metal craft. Creatures you control get plus three plus oh, as long as you control three or more artifacts, five, four. Which we will. Uh, Al Heimark Archive, five generic for legendary artifact. If you, if you would gain life, you gain twice that much life instead. And if you would draw a card except for the first one, you draw. And if you're draw steps, draw two cards instead. So this doubles the amount of cards we draw due to sacrificing blood tokens, meaning we get even bigger of uh, payoff. So instead of drawing one, as we sacrifice the blood token, you draw two. So discard a card, draw two instead, and also pay one mana. Then inspiring statuary. 
for those of you who are asking how we would tap our artifacts without sacrificing well, then well, this is it. Because for three generic and three generic, uh, it's an artifact that says non-artifact spells you cast have improvised, meaning your artifacts can help cast those spells. And each artifact you tap after you're done activating mana abilities pays for one generic. And that's how we will have tapped artifacts for when Alibu Ancient Witness triggers. Next, and to go in combination with that, we have Clock of Omens, which for four generic is an artifact that you can tap two untapped artifacts you control to untap target artifacts. And then Guy for Ether Grid, two generic and red for an enchantment that can tap two untapped artifacts you control. And then it deals one damage to target creature or player. So pretty nice. Probably could have included that in my Strafon deck. That's my mistake. Quicksmith Genius, two generic and red for a creature human artificer that says whenever an artifact enters about the under control, you may discard a card. And if you do, draw a card through two. It's pretty nice. Reckless Fire Weaver, one generic and red for a human artificer, one three. That says whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, reckless fire reaver deals one damage to each opponent. So the deal damage is our blood to earn in the battlefield. Trading post for four generic gets an artifact that for one you can tap it and discard a card, you gain for life. One you can tap it, pay one life, put a zero one white gold, I mean white goat creature token onto the battlefield, excuse me. Then for one generic, you sacrifice it and Sacrifice a creature, excuse me, return target artifact from your graveyard to your hand. And then for one generic, you can also tap trading post and sacrifice an artifact to draw a card. So instead of just having to discard two blood tokens, for one of those blood tokens, you can uh, tap, tap, you can use one mana to tap trading post and sacrifice one of those blood tokens. And just draw a card without having to discard. And then if you have Clock of Omens out, you can begin untapping trading posts and doing that one at a time to full amounts of value. And you can discard cards to gain four life for each one uh, you discard with trading post. Pretty nice, all in all. Oscar, the Reconstructor. Two generic, red and white for legendary creature, giant artificial vigilance, 4-4. Four, four. And then for one generic, you sacrifice an artifact, and then target creature you control gets plus two plus oh until the turn. And then for X, you can tap it and exile an artifact card with mana value X from your graveyard, CMC or convert mana cost in this case. Create two tokens that are copies of the exile card, activate only as a sorcery. So if you would have those cards in your graveyard, then you can do that. Or we'll really focus around the part where we sacrifice an artifact to. To give target creature, uh, we control plus two plus one to one turn, and then finally for our last non-land card, uh, our fiftieth card, it was the one you saw last time. Hellkite Tyrant, coming from Strafan now to Audric Bloodcursed, because uh, for four generic and double red, it's a creature dragon six five flying trample, so two key words right there, and when it deals combat damage to a player. You gain control of all artifacts that player controls. At the beginning of your upkeep, you control 20 or more artifacts. You win the game, and due to us creating a lot of blood tokens that have to be artifacts, those count. So this can win us the game pretty easily. Uh, then we have Myriad Landscape, that, which is a land that earns about the tap, and you can tap for a colors or for two generic. You can tap it and sacrifice it. And... Search your library from two basic land cards that share a land type. Put them onto the battlefield tap and shuffle your library. Then we have Arch of Araska, which is a land with Ascend, meaning that if you have 10 or more permanents, uh, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. And you can tap to add a colors or for five generic, you can tap to draw you a card, but you can only activate that ability if you have the city's blessing, which most likely you will. Isolated Watchtower is a land that enters in untapped. Uh, it can enter, it can, excuse me, tap to add a colors or for two generic, you can tap it and scry one, which is where you look to call your library and decide whether it goes on top 
just say where it is, or it goes on bottom. And then you may reveal uh, the top card of your library. If a basic land card is revealed this way, put it onto the battlefield tapped, activate this ability only if the opponent controls two or more lands than you, in which most likely there will be someone who will, because there might be a green player at the table. And in a sense of lands, they will be ramping way more than you. So this is pretty good. Sanctum of Eternity is a land that can tap for a colors or for two generic, it can tap to return target commander you own from the battlefield to your hand, activate this ability only during your turn. So you can return object to your hand and cast them without having to pay much commander tax, which if you've forgotten what that was, commander tax. So say your commander gets sent back to, to the command zone, uh, it then costs two generic more to cast for each time it's been sent back to that command zone. For, so first time, two more. Second time, four more. Third time, six more. Uh, whereas being sent back to your hand or like graveyard, where it can be cheated out or like in your hand in this case, it you don't have to pay commander tanks, which is pretty nice. Next, there's command beacon. If you don't have Sanctum of Eternity, which Command Beacon is a land that can tap for a colorless orc, can tap to sacrifice itself and put your commander from into your hand from your from the command zone. Blech. So that way you don't have to pay uh, command attacks once again. Next is Inventor's Fair, which is a legendary land at the beginning of your upkeep. You control three or more artifacts, which you will probably. You gain one life. And it can tap to add a color to your mana pool. And for four generic, you can tap it to sacrifice Inventor's Fair and search your library for an artifact card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shove your library, activate this ability, only to control three or more artifacts. So pretty nice. Sun Home, Fortress of the Legion. It's a land that can tap for a color's mana or for two generic, a red and white, you can tap to give card creature you control or any target creature, I guess, for that matter. Double strike if you wanted, but most likely yours. Finally, we, for our non-basic lands, is Mirror Pool. Uh, enters about the old tent. It can tap for a colors, or for two generic and a colors, you can tap into sacrifices and call the target instant or sorcery spell you control. And then you may choose any targets with copy. And for four generic and a colors, you can tap it. You sacrifice Mirror Pool once again. And put Zogan, that's a once a battle, that's a copy of target creature control. So a copy object once again, due to legendary uh, rule, you will have to sacrifice one of them, either the token or the non token creature. Still pretty cool. And then we have 21 basic mountains and 21 basic planes. And with all that, the conclusion to. Audric Blood Curse, the EDH guide brought to you by Counterspell Hater. In the end of this video. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like and subscribe for more of this kind of content. Uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss another one of these videos. Go check out my other videos. Uh, and share this video with others. And that is it for me.